joy or happiness, success or failure, peace or dismay. The foundations of our life rest on the words we receive. A word of hope and guidance, translated from the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. You are listening to a word of faith with Bishop Macedo. Univer Video is your platform for Christian content, and it gives you access to the church meetings of the Universal Church around the world, and they are in English. Even the meetings at the Temple of Solomon that provide live, simultaneous translations to English. All you have to do is sign up, and this is how: visit www.univervideo.com online, or download the application on your mobile device. And complete the simple registration form. Have your bank card ready, and choose your terms of payment. And before you know it, you'll be up and running. Stay connected to the things of faith during the 21 days fast of Daniel. Hello, my friends. May God bless you all, and that the Holy Spirit may enlighten our minds, that all of us may have one single spirit, one single thought, one single heart, and that we may all be in one single body, which is the holy, sacred body of our Lord Jesus Christ, of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ, the spiritual church, not the institutional church, that this may happen to all of us, you who are always watching our meditation here by the morning or early in the morning or throughout the day, that the Holy Spirit may open your understanding to understand His Word and that He may enlighten my thoughts and put the right words, words that may meet your need. Very well. We are meditating about Isaiah chapter 51. When God says like this, listen to me, listen to me, you who follow after righteousness, you who seek the Lord. This is very important for you to read slowly and to meditate on every word. First, God calls us to listen to him. Who is he inviting to do so? Everybody? No. But those who follow after righteousness and who seek Him. So here He's talking to those who believe in His Word. He's speaking to His followers, His disciples. He's talking to me, to you, who have been believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to me, you who follow after righteousness, who walk in righteousness, in other words, far away from sin, and you who seek the Lord. And then, pay attention. He's speaking to those who believe. Here are not included the unbelievers, only those who believe. So he says like this, Look to the rock, from which you were hewn and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. So he's, first of all, making us to see where we came from, to remember where we came from. Do you remember where you came from? I do. For instance, I talk about myself and you speak about yourself and each person has their own experience. Each person has lived their own hell 
before meeting heaven, before meeting the kingdom of heaven. But I speak about myself. For instance, I had, until my 19 years of age, I was a youth, let's say, oppressed. I was a youth who did not believe that much on myself. If I didn't believe in myself, how would I like people to believe in me? I was discredited by others and by me as well. Why? Because I was possessed by filthy spirits, deceiving spirits. So these filthy spirits and deceiving who blind the understanding, they blinded my understanding until I have received the Holy Spirit when I met my Lord Jesus. On that day, the Holy Spirit this was very interesting. As I was just a youth, I was not killing, I was not stealing. I wouldn't live a irregular type of life, fully irregular. But because of that, I thought that I did not have that many sins. I was a sinner, but was not that much of a sinner. However, be amazed because the Holy Spirit convinced me of my sin. When he convinced me of my sin, even though I was not an evil person, I was even a religious person, I was a type of person who was doing no evil to anybody, even being a normal type of person, as people of this world, I thought that everything was fine with myself. But the Holy Spirit convinced me of my sins. When he convinced me of my sins, my God, I felt like being in hell. Literally, I felt in hell. He showed me where my soul would go if I was not forgiven, if I was not saved. When he showed me that, when he convinced me of my sin, my God, I was so desperate but so desperate, in agony. I never felt something so strong in my whole life like I felt on those moments. He showed me that my soul was going down to hell. I was seeing hell. Literally, I saw hell. And I screamed within my soul, who can save me? And he gloriously, mercifully, he showed me his son, the Lord Jesus. He revealed Jesus. He presented to me Jesus. And I went running towards Jesus who had his arms open to forgive me. So when that happened, this moment that I lived when I was 19 years old was when I received the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus, was where I found my Lord and Savior, my beloved one from my soul. What a peace. I felt my soul becoming light. I felt free but perfectly free. That moment was so glorious that I was crying of joy. I would laugh because it was such a joy, complete joy from the Lord Jesus. And I spoke to him, Lord, take me. I don't want to remain living. I don't want to take the risk on losing what you just gave me. Please, take my life. I don't want to live anymore. I'm already satisfied. I'm no longer thinking about my future, my dreams. No, none of that. All these are left behind. I want to go to you, Lord. Obviously, he did not answer my prayer. Actually, I, indeed, I died for the world, for the world.
I turned my backs to the world in such a way that inside of me it came a powerful, strong desire to communicate, to transfer, to give to other people that rich, unmeasurable rich from the forgiveness of my Lord Jesus. So since then, that fire never left from within myself. So this was my experience. So I remember that exactly this. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the hole of the pit from which you were dug. In other words, the rock from which you were hewn was so acid where I came from was so strong, let's put it this way, was like the entire hell, the devil and all his demons were tying me up, holding me back, blocking my thoughts, blinding my understanding. I know where I came from. I know it. I was not a thief. I was not an addict. I was not a deep sinner, but I was simply a common boy. But the sin that I carried was monstrous. I was dug out from a rock. In other words, I was removed from a prison, from the prison, from the slavery of sin. The devil kept me stuck into his claws and God removed me, dragged me out. I was hewn from that rock from hell. I was dug out from the deepest pit of the abyss, an endless pit I was dug out from. So I remember. And because I carry this continuous memory on my mind, I have the care. I have the care to keep me saved until I'm gone from this world, the encounter with our Lord Jesus. So that's why we are always strengthening the idea of the salvation of the soul. Because when we fear for our salvation, we fear God. When we don't fear for the salvation of the soul, it's because we don't fear God. When we live a regular life, a life without laws, without rules, without discipline, without order. It's because we do not fear God. But when we submit our lives accordingly to the word of God, it's because we fear the Lord. So God made me to see, to look at my situation. But Bishop, why God made you to look at your soul and has been making you to look to keep the salvation of your soul if you are already saved, if you already have the Holy Spirit. It is true. But we cannot forget, dear friends, that because of the greatness the rich, the grandiosity of our salvation, we can never keep our eyes on the future, wanting big, grand things, trying to achieve things from this world. God did not save me. In my case, I see it like this. He did not give me the Holy Spirit to enjoy the kingdom of this world. He did not give me the kingdom of heaven. He did not put the kingdom of heaven inside of my soul for me to enjoy the kingdom of the earth. 
No, he gave me the Holy Spirit for me to remain alive, saved throughout eternity. And because of that, I cannot forget of my principles on who I was and what happened to me. I cannot forget the rock where I was hewn from. I cannot forget the hole of the pit from where I was dug out from. No way, because if I have always this on my mind, I will always keep on taking care of my salvation and to keep it running away from sin, running away from unrighteousness, running away from what is wrong. It's like Job. God said to Satan, where do you come from? And Satan said, from surrounding the earth. And God called his attention, said to Satan, did you observe my servant Job, upright man, God-fearing man, and who shun evil or shun sin? So God honored Job before Satan's face. Because even though he was a man, even though he was made out of flesh and bone, Job kept himself in the character that pleased God. And God saved him. And God kept him. And God protected him. And God honored him. So God here in this text, he says first for us to listen to him. In other words, us who follow righteousness, who seek the Lord. And after that, he made us to remember where we came from, where we were. Do you remember where you were? Of course you do. You know who you were. You who are watching this program, you know who you were. You were a lost person. Yes or no? You were disoriented. You wanted to end your life. You wanted to kill yourself. You didn't want to live anymore. You put all your strength to try to accomplish your dreams. And more and more, you were going deeper into the hole of the pit that you were in. And after that, the Lord Jesus was powerful to remove you from this rock from hell, from this slavery from sin. The Lord Jesus dragged you out, dug you out from the deep pit and brought you to salvation. But you rejected that with time. You forgot who you were. And then... You went back to live this filthy world that made you to feel the injustices, the mistake, the sin that displeased God. But you forgot your sad past and on what God has done in your life and now you are alone without a church, saying, I'm going to follow God on my way, I'm going to read the Bible, I'm going to pray. You're going to do this for a while until you grow tired. Do you know why you're going to grow tired? Because you stop having that which is called to listen to the Word of God. You can read the Bible, but you not have years to listen to it. You can understand the text, but to keep on having years to comprehend, to discern what the Holy Spirit is telling you. So sooner or later, you will get frustrated and leave the Bible on the side just as you left the church, just as you left the communion with the saints, just as you left the kingdom of God. You know that the church of the Lord Jesus is the kingdom of God on the earth. And the kingdom of heaven is when we die and we reach eternal salvation. But many people forget where they came from and they make little of what God has given them. And that's the truth. 
and that's why they are suffering. They are in pain, even though they call themselves believers in Christ Jesus. So God says like this, Look to Abraham, your father. Look to Abraham. So when you look to Abraham, God is saying, Look to my servant Abraham, the model of man that pleases me. Look to Job. Look to Daniel. Look to Noah, just man. So when God tells us to look, is that, let's say, like as looking at the image of those men, if we are sharing the same character, the same objectives, the same dreams, tomorrow we're going to continue talking about this. Because the character of Abraham made him to resist, let him to resist the offer that the king of Sodom, who represented the devil, presented to him. Look, you can keep all the gold, all the spoils. I only want the man. In other words, the devil only wants the souls of people. Money, riches, he doesn't need none of that. He only wants souls. Dear friends, look to Abraham. Abraham said, no. I raised my hand to God and I swore that I will take nothing from you. That you may not say that I made Abraham rich. No, my rich come from above. If God wants to make me rich, I will be rich in this world economically. If he wants me to be poor, I will be poor in this world and I will be happy. It doesn't matter what God offers me, what God gives me, what God puts in my hands. I will say thanks, I will give praise because the greatest rich that he can give me is what he has already given me, his Holy Spirit. With the Holy Spirit, it is impossible to not make a difference. Pay attention. When the person has the Holy Spirit, it is impossible that person to not be happy. It is impossible for them to not be happy. Impossible. But when they don't have him, they keep on making mistakes out there, unfortunately. God bless you all. Tomorrow we'll be back. And don't forget, don't forget about our commitment. The prayer on pyjamas. Pyjamas because in Brazil the time is 3 o'clock in the morning. From Friday to Saturday, when we say early in the morning on Saturday, it's early in the morning from Friday to Saturday. When we speak about early in the morning on Sunday, so it's Saturday to Sunday. So it's early in the morning on Saturday that many people don't understand. You don't have this perception about it. So this Saturday at 3 o'clock in the morning, it's not midnight, it's not 1 a.m. on Saturday, it's not 2 a.m. on Saturday. It is 3 a.m. early in the morning on Saturday. A time that it should be on pajamas. So we're going to say the prayer on pajamas to receive the Holy Spirit. God bless you all. He who believes comes. He who does not believe stay on the side. He who believes sacrifices. He who does not believe they don't sacrifice. God bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. KG Helpline Call Center is open 24 hours a day, every day of the week, all year round. If you need help due to a serious problem you may be going through, if you feel that you have nowhere to turn to and desperately need someone to lend a listening ear, then we can help you. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have done, your religion or race. Your call will be answered by someone who genuinely cares about you and have your best interests at heart. We also arrange home visits or the housebounds and hospital visits for anyone in great need of kindly human contact. Whether it is simply information you want or desperately need someone to talk to, we're here for you.